Hey everyone, welcome to Plants and Politics. So the AP reported that they've reviewed thousands of pages of court documents regarding BLM protests. What they found is pretty interesting. They found that the vast majority of the people arrested were young people from suburban neighborhoods. So the same people that Trump is claiming he's going to help and save their neighborhoods. These are the people who are out protesting, saying this shit's got to change. Now, some did hold far right or far left ideologies. Some had criminal records. Some were carrying illegal or were carrying weapons illegally because they had criminal records. And so they're not allowed to have the the weapons. Some had no ideology at all. And then some just simply used the protests as cover to loot or to cause chaos. But many had no previous arrest record and no known ties to Antifa. In fact, they said that after combing through thousands of documents, they found only one mention of Antifa, and it read, quote, suspected Antifa activity associated with the protests. So not even a specific person, and it was only suspected, not confirmed. The AP also found that 40% of those facing charges are white, approximately 30% are Black, and about 6% are Latino. Over two-thirds of the people were under the age of 30, and the vast majority were male. And while most of the charges are for arson, burglary, or failure to comply with a federal order, the AP found that the court documents contain accusations of far-right extremism and racism. So one case in particular, they said a 63-year-old man from Virginia Beach, his name is John Malcolm Bearswill, he called a black church that had held a prayer vigil for George Floyd, and he threatened to burn it down while using racial slurs. The call was overheard by children, by the way. Two other men, members of a Missouri militia group, were arrested in a hotel room when they traveled to Kenosha, Wisconsin, with an arsenal of weapons. And FBI agents also arrested three far-right militia members uh, from the Boogaloo Boys gang. The men had attended a BLM protest and were reportedly upset that there was no violence at the protest. So they decided to try to shake things up, take matters into their own hands. So they said that they took Carloads of explosives, military-grade weapons to meet up about two miles from the protest site and pumped gasoline into tanks. So they were planning on a big shootout and blowing some stuff up. Luckily, these guys were arrested before they had a chance to do any of this and cause any harm. And the AP also discovered, and this is really interesting, this goes back to my report about you know, banana bill bars, Justice Department, they found that while many inmates have been released recently due to COVID, Bill Barr's Justice Department has not only been pushing to keep these people confined and behind bars for low risk offenses, but their cases are also being tried by the federal government, whereas normally they would be referred to state court. So federal prosecutors have even appealed judges' orders to release some of these defendants. So they've like gone as far as to appeal decisions to release them to try to keep them in prison. And to be clear, keeping people in prison prying, prior to their trial or hearing is typically only done when the defendant is some sort of risk. So they're either a danger to society they are a flight risk or you know whatever the case may be but they have to pose some sort of significant risk one case they cited was that of a 25 year old young guy named cyril lartigue i believe who lives at home with his parents in austin texas he has no criminal history no affiliation with any extremist group But he did attend a protest and he was caught on camera making Molotov cocktails. Now, he didn't, it didn't say that he was throwing them or he had used them, but he was making them. Prosecutors argued to keep him in prison pending his trial. (laughs) So no, 
no past record, no reason to think he's a threat to society in general. So the judge in that case said, quote, I have defendants in here with significant criminal histories that the government agrees to release. We have no evidence of him, at least that's been given to me, being a radical or a member of a group that advocates violence towards the police or others. We've got no criminal history. What evidence is there that he's a danger to society? And this kid even said when he was arrested that he just basically had a stupid moment, that he just was doing something stupid and he essentially took responsibility for it and apologized. So defense attorneys and civil rights activists are questioning all of this. They believe that Barr is doing this strictly as a way to deter protests. Um, essentially, as I talked about with, with how they're going after Melania's friend, they're using the Department of Justice as a political tool. They want to prevent people from exercising their First Amendment rights to assemble and protest. I, I mean, it is sickening how much we are descending into fascism. It is a slippery slope and we're halfway down, it seems. And one seasoned attorney that the AP spoke with, he's not involved in any of these cases, but he has a history of representing clients who attend protests. So he knows quite a bit about it. And he said, quote, it is highly unusual and without precedent in recent American history. Almost all of the conduct that's being charged is conduct that when it occurs is prosecuted at the state and local level, which of course comes with lower charges, you know, uh, much less significant charges or even just like community service. This is obscene what is going on, that our DOJ, our Department of Justice has been completely hijacked by partisan actors. And, you know, I mean, we just saw someone resign the other day. I, I think he had been with the department his entire adult life, like 36 years. And he said he can't take it anymore. He did, he's so sick of seeing Barr be Trump's lackey and use the Department of Justice as a tool, as a weapon to help Trump when he's supposed to be the attorney general for the country. He is not Trump's personal attorney. That is not his job. But instead, he is using his power against us, against the people he is supposed to be working for, who literally pay his freaking salary, by the way, all in an effort to help Trump win re-election and to silence his opposition absolutely sickening. Once again, I say we need the United Nations to step in because this, this is out of control. And I don't know who or what can do anything about it. I honestly don't. Not when they control everything. So get out there and vote, people. It's even stuff like this that is on the line. You don't want to end up in jail for potentially six months to a year for simply attending a protest and exercising your First Amendment rights, get out there and vote. All right, as always, like, share, subscribe. I will talk to you soon. Thanks for watching and listening. Take care. Thanks for listening to Plants and Politics. The only way we can take our country and power back is to spread the truth and build an army. So remember to like, follow, subscribe, and share on Facebook, YouTube, and wherever you listen to your podcasts. Thanks again.